Welcome to the Cheating Secrets channel. Fifteen years ago, Amy and I got married. We had been dating for three years after our first date, when Amy was a sophomore in college. My name is Mark Butler. Amy and I met at a party and instantly became a couple, inseparable, until I graduated from high school two years later. We broke up during Amy's senior year, but planned to get married afterward. About six months after we got married, we attended a party with several other couples our age. It was a barbecue with grilled steaks and plenty of drinks. As the evening went on, the crowd thinned out until it was just us and three other couples sitting around a campfire, drinking and talking. The topic of the hall pass came up. What the hell is a hall pass? I asked, Sadie, a petite blonde sitting to my left, spoke up. A hall pass is exactly what it sounds like. It's a game we play where you name someone for whom you'd want a free pass from your marital vows. You know, a celebrity you're allowed to have sex with. So, you guys just play this game? Yes and no, Sadie said, patting her husband on the leg. Yes, it's a game we play, but Tom and I agreed to actually give each other one hall pass. It doesn't have to be with a celebrity. I was shocked. Seriously? You mean you guys have a standing agreement that either of you can have sex with someone else at any time? Tom looked me straight in the eyes and laughed. Exactly, buddy. He gestured toward the two other couples. They have the same agreement. We all came to the decision that same night. Katie, you've used your hall pass, right? Katie lowered her head. Tom, you don't need to share this with everyone. Yes, I was at a conference, working with a nice guy whose wife had just died in a car accident. I called Carl and told him I was going to use my hall pass to help the guy. Amy stayed silent but moved closer to me, holding my hand. Carl, you didn't mind that Katie slept with another man? Oh, yes, I'm fine with it. She came back home to me, and one day I'll get to use my hall pass too. They continued their game, naming who their hall pass would be. Amy nudged me to name someone after she announced hers. Fifteen years later, I couldn't recall who each of us chose, but I do remember the passionate sex we had when we got home. Amy even confessed that while we were making love, she imagined her fantasy lover doing it to her. The next morning, I made it very clear to her that I would never agree to a hall pass. Amy agreed it was just a game, the events of that night have mostly faded from my memory. We went on with our lives. Amy and I quickly started a family, having a boy and a girl. We kept in touch with Sadie and Tom for a few years, but we lost contact after they got divorced. A couple of years ago, I ran into Tom at a bar. I had stopped in after work by chance and saw him drinking alone. We had a few drinks together, and he told me that not only had he and Sadie divorced, but the other two couples from that barbecue had also split up. The main reason for each divorce was the hall pass. Tom explained that all of them believed the hall pass would allow them to experience excitement outside their marriages without affecting their relationships. Tom said they couldn't have been more wrong. Once everyone used their hall pass, comparisons and suspicions arose. Those suspicions led to disrespect, which ultimately led to divorce. My conversation with Tom confirmed what I had thought that night at the party about the hall pass. It might be a fun game to play as a fantasy, but in the real world, it doesn't work. I had planned to tell Amy about my meeting with Tom, but due to our hectic lives, it never happened. Sitting here now, I regret not doing so. It was Thursday evening when Amy was at a conference in Los Angeles. Around midnight, my phone rang. It was Amy. It was noisy, as if she were at a club. From her voice, I could tell she'd been drinking. You won't believe it. We just met Joshua from my favorite soap opera. He likes me, and I'm going to use my hall pass. The noise grew louder. What did you say? Something about using a hall pass? Yes, darling, I knew you'd understand. See you on Saturday. What? What the hell are you talking about? Amy, can you hear me? The call ended. I quickly tried calling her back, but her phone went straight to voicemail. I left her several messages, pleading with her not to do anything stupid. I also sent her a few texts, warning her there would be consequences if we broke our wedding vows. Hearing nothing from Amy all night, I tried calling her several times in the morning but got no response. 
Friday was a terrible day, as I had no idea what was happening with my wife in Los Angeles. After work, I dropped the kids off at my parents' house and headed to Jack's place. Jack's wife, Jenny, had gone on the same trip with my wife. They worked together and were good friends. Jack met me at the door, surprised to see me. Hi, Jack, I need your help. I can't reach Amy. When she called me last night, her voice sounded strange. Can you call Jenny to see if she knows anything? Of course, Mark. I'll call Jenny and let her know you're here looking for Amy. No, don't tell her I'm here. I'm afraid Amy might ask her to cover for her. Just call her, casually mention Amy in the conversation, and let me listen without her knowing. Sure, buddy, they should be finishing up their sessions about now. I don't know what compelled me to do it, but as Jack pulled out his phone, I turned on the voice recorder on mine. His wife answered on the first ring. Hi, honey, you must have ESP. I just got back to my room after the sessions. We're having dinner tonight, and I'll see you tomorrow. They chatted a bit about the conference before Jack brought up Amy. Have you seen much of Amy? Mark called me, left a message, and asked if I'd spoken to you about her. God, don't tell him you spoke to me. The last time I saw her was last night. We were all drinking when that hot soap opera star came over to our table. Amy got his autograph, and they danced a few times. We were sitting at the table when Amy mentioned something about having a hall pass agreement with Mark. The soap star quickly jumped at the chance, volunteering to be her hall pass partner. I tried to talk her out of it, but she said this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Amy leaned over and whispered to me that she was going to let the guy do whatever he wanted with her. The next thing I remember was seeing her walking arm-in-arm -arm with him, leaving the club. I haven't seen her since. Please, don't tell Mark. Jack ended the call, looking at me. Sorry, man. Do you guys really have a hall pass agreement? No, we played a game called hall pass years ago, but I explicitly told her I would never agree to something like that. What are you going to do? I don't know, but it's not going to be good. On the way home, I stopped by my parents' house and asked my mom to keep the kids for the weekend. She could tell something was wrong, but I didn't tell her what. When I got home, I tried calling and texting Amy a few more times, but there was no response. I assumed she had turned off her phone to avoid being disturbed while she was having sex with her soap star. Amy's flight was scheduled to bring her back by midday. She was giving Jenny a ride home, so I asked Jack to text me when Amy dropped her off. I set up our video camera on the shelf in the living room so I could confront her face to face. I wanted everything she said to be recorded at 8 4 o'clock. I received a message from Jack. I had about 20 minutes. I picked up the camera remote and waited for my wife to come home. I nearly jumped out of my seat when the garage door slammed shut. Pressing the record button on the remote, I tried to stay as calm as possible. Amy burst in from the kitchen, dragging her bag behind her. Oh God, what a crazy trip, she exclaimed excitedly. Yeah, I've got the bags. I tried calling you. My phone broke. I dropped it, and it shattered into pieces. The last time I talked to you, I didn't hear you very well. It sounded like you met a soap opera star and used your hall pass. Yeah, we were at the club, and Joshua Morrow came over to our table. You know, the star from my soap. We danced a few times and talked about our hall pass agreement. God, he's so hot. He said he wanted me to use my pass on him. That's why I called you. He's been with all the hottest actresses, and he wanted me. Can you believe it? He took me to his place, and, well, you probably don't need the details. No, no, go ahead. Tell me how he had sex with my wife using his actor's tool that's been with hundreds of other women. Amy still hadn't realized that I was angry. Oh yes, he was experienced. He knows how to handle a woman's body. He said he took one of those pills. Damn, you've got to try it. He lasted forever. God, he was good. The stories you hear about these stars being great in bed, they're true. Amy was practically giddy as she recounted her story. Finally, she noticed the anger on my face. Mark, are you okay? No, I'm not. My wife is standing here in my living room, confessing to marital infidelity, and she can't stop gushing about sex with another man. 
Infidelity? What are you talking about, Mark? This was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Joshua was my whole pass. I thought you'd be happy that I got to live out my dream. I'm supposed to be happy that you broke our wedding vows? I didn't break our wedding vows. I just took a break to live out my fantasy. It was like what our friends did. I simply used my hall pass. A look of concern appeared on Amy's face. No, Amy, it was just a game, and I made it very clear that it was only a game. I told you I would never break our wedding vows, and I wouldn't tolerate you doing it either. If you had the chance to be with a celebrity, I'd be all for it. I don't understand why you can't just be happy for me that I had an experience I'll never forget. Don't worry, I'll never forget it either. And I'm sure the family you've forgotten about won't forget it either. I stepped closer to Amy, grabbing her hand. I slipped her wedding ring off her finger. You made love to him without taking off your wedding ring? This symbol of our love and commitment to each other? We didn't make love, we had sex. And no, I didn't take it off. I was going to, but Joshua wanted me to leave it on. I'm sure he did. He wanted to mock your marriage and had his way with you, knowing you're a married woman. Amy stood with her hand on her hip, her typical angry stance. I don't know why you're making such a big deal out of this. It was just two nights. What? Do I need to take you upstairs to make it up to you? Thanks, but no thanks. Let me ask you something. Soap Boy didn't use protection, did he? Well, no. Amy was angry, but my question had clearly unsettled her. You let a man have unprotected sex with you, a man who has probably slept with more than a hundred women and, being a TV star, likely some men too. I wonder what Hollywood disease he gifted you. Amy gasped. Maybe he gave you something else too, especially if you're not on the pill. You're not on the pill, are you? No, you know I don't need that because you had. Oh my god. Amy gasped again. Hey, just think about it. You might be carrying a TV star's baby. Amy was clearly doing the math in her head. No, I had my period last week, so I'm safe until the end of this week. Funny how you're only thinking about that now. Super Soap Boy may have deposited enough material in you over those two days to catch an early egg. How many times did he do it? Mark, you're making too big a deal out of this. Too big a deal? So you're saying I shouldn't make a big deal about my wife committing adultery and abandoning her family? Amy stomped her foot. I told you, it wasn't adultery. I used my hall pass. I called you and even told you I was using it. There's a problem, Amy. You used something that doesn't exist. I never gave you permission to walk away from our marriage and destroy our family. Stop being so dramatic. I really thought you'd be happy for me. I guess I was wrong. I'm done talking about this. Where are the kids? They're at my parents' house. I didn't want them here while we discussed our divorce. What? What do you mean by divorce? You're going to divorce me over this? No, 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 we're not getting divorced. As calmly as I could, I looked Amy straight in the eyes. You made your choice, now I'm making mine. That's ridiculous. You're telling me you're going to abandon our family over this? It's not a big deal, and you're just going to have to get over it. Amy shouted. Without saying another word, I quietly went upstairs to the guest bedroom, locking the door behind me. For over an hour, Amy knocked on the door, telling me we needed to talk. Silence was my response. Waking up early, I left the house before Amy woke up. When I arrived at my parents' house... I found my dad awake while everyone else was still sleeping. Over a cup of coffee, I told him the whole story. Dad just listened, not saying a word until I finished. When I got to the end, he simply looked at me. What an idiot. Dad, can I ask you what you would do in my situation? Son, you have to understand that things were different back then. It seems like this kind of crap is acceptable now. If your mother had done what your wife did, I'd have put a bullet in her head. But you've got to do what you've got to do. Dad, I don't think I can get past this. She knew how I felt about infidelity. Hell, I thought she felt the same way. What about that prenup her mom made us sign? Amy told me her mom caught Amy's dad cheating several times and wanted to protect her daughter. 
It seems like Amy's completely forgotten about that. My dad laughed. I'm sure you're going to remind her. Oh, absolutely, but not right away. I want to see what she does. She keeps saying it's no big deal and that I just need to get over it. Dad, I really don't believe she regrets what she did or thinks she did anything wrong. It wasn't until after 10 that my phone started blowing up. Amy was calling and texting, wanting to know where I was. When I didn't respond, she called the kids. Julie, our daughter, walked into the kitchen, yawning. Dad, Mom wants to know where you are and why you're not answering her calls. Sweetheart, what did she say to you? Funny, that's exactly what she asked me. She wanted to know what you told us. What's going on with you two? Are you cheating on her, or is she cheating on you? Damn, she's sharp. Dad chimed in. Well, shit. Mom cheated on you, didn't she? I think you should ask your mother that question, I said. I didn't want to be accused of throwing her under the bus. I knew Julie would be very upset with her mother. Julie, being the stubborn teenager she was, pulled out her phone and put it on speaker. Dad's here. Did you cheat on him? Julie, what are you talking about? Whatever he said, it's not true. What did your father tell you? He didn't tell me anything, Mom. I can read it on his face. You cheated on him, didn't you? No, I didn't, and if he tells you that I did, it's a lie. All right, Mom, you sound guilty to me. Julie hit the end call button on her phone. Sorry, Dad, I can't believe she did this to you. I assume you're going to divorce her. You've always preached honesty and morals. I wouldn't blame you if she cheated on you. With a grim expression, Julie turned and went back upstairs. Your kid has a good head on her shoulders. Wise beyond her years. She'll handle this just fine, Dad said. I'm not sure I'll even still be a dad, I replied. About 30 minutes later, there was a loud knock at the front door. I heard Dad say from behind the door, Amy, I'm sorry, but you're not welcome in our house today. Mr. Butler, I don't know what your son told you but he made it all up. I didn't do anything. Whatever you say, Amy, but you're still not welcome here. Tell him I didn't do anything, and if he says I did, he's going to have a problem, Amy shot back. She sounded angry, I said to Dad when he came back into the kitchen. Be careful, son, Dad warned. I've seen that look before. She's not going to back down easily. That woman's like a cornered cat. She's going to lie and claw her way out of this. I hope you can prove what she did. She looks ready for a fight. Amy was silent when the kids and I returned home later that day. That night, I slept in the guest room again. This time, no one knocked on the door. The next morning, the kids left for school, and I sat at the kitchen table sipping my coffee. I decided it was time to confront Amy face to face. She walked into the kitchen as if nothing was wrong. Did the kids sleep well? She asked. I nodded as she poured herself a cup of coffee. Sweetheart, why are you sleeping in the guest room? Are you feeling okay? You know why. I don't want to sleep next to my cheating wife. Cheating wife? Mark, what are you talking about? So, I suppose you're going to deny that you had sex with a soap opera star while you were out of town last week? Mark, I don't know what you're trying to pull. She turned and looked me in the eye with an angry glare. You're accusing me of something you can't prove, and I'll make you pay dearly for it. You know you won't be able to prove anything. There it is, the declaration of war. No. We can go back to the way things were, but that's up to you. I'm willing to forget all these baseless accusations. Sorry, but I can't forget what you did. I'm going to say this one more time. I didn't do anything, and more importantly, you can't prove I did. You'll regret it if you try to claim otherwise. Drop it, and let's move on with our marriage. I understood the threat when I heard it. I didn't say anything, just stood up and walked to my car as if I were heading to work. I drove down the street, waiting for Amy to leave for her school, where she worked as the assistant principal. Once she was gone, I returned to the house. Taking Amy's words to heart, I entered the house looking for evidence. If this was going to be a war, I wanted to gather as much ammunition as possible. Jenny had mentioned that Amy got Soap Boy's autograph. Was she planning to deny the affair? 
I figured something like that would be too much of a trophy to get rid of. She would have hidden it. It took two hours of searching, but I finally found it. Amy had an old briefcase tucked away in the back of her side of the closet. It was locked, but she always used the same code for all her briefcases. At the bottom, beneath a few folders, I found a photograph. It was a standard promotional photo of Soap Boy. The inscription was modest to my friend Amy, Joshua Morrow. On the back, there was another message, You are an amazing lover, Joshua. I examined the photo before carefully putting it back in its place. My next stop was a lawyer. Before leaving, I made copies of our prenuptial agreement, the recording of Amy's friend's phone call, and my recording of Amy's confession, placing them on two flash drives. The lawyer I visited was well known for her ruthless approach to dealing with cheating spouses and in the world of divorces. Vicky Sampson was famously nicknamed the She-Devil. I laid out my story about what Amy had done. When I finished explaining the situation and how I wanted it to unfold, she leaned back in her chair and smiled. I like it. You're ruthless. Set the trap and spring it when there's no way out. It'll be uncomfortable for a while before we present the evidence. Everyone will think you're lying or that you've lost your mind. Let her think she's winning right up until the very end. Mrs. Sampson shook my hand. I'll prepare the paperwork and arrange for her to be served at school. There are a couple of things I need you to do. First, check your credit card statements. We need to figure out which club she went to with her soap star. Second, get access to her iCloud. I bet there are selfies of her with Joshua in there. She's probably smart enough to delete anything incriminating from her phone and upload it to a secure location. If we're lucky, a copy might still be in her cloud. Rushing home, I quickly sat down at her computer. I didn't even have to try accessing her iCloud. Hidden in her photo folder were the three pictures I was looking for. Two shots of Amy with Soap Boy and one of Amy, Soap Boy, and her friend Jenny. I copied the photos onto a flash drive. A quick look at the pictures gave me the name of the club, which was written on the wall behind them. My lawyer was thrilled with my discovery. She told me under no circumstances should I let anyone know we had the photos. Her plan was to serve Amy at school on Friday afternoon, giving me time to take the kids to my parents' house for the weekend. She also told me not to move out of the house, no matter what Amy said or did. That Friday, I had just dropped the kids off at my parents' house when my phone rang. I switched it to voicemail and ignored her messages. I hadn't been home for more than ten minutes when she stormed in. I was sitting in the living room and turned on the video camera as soon as I heard the garage door slam. I didn't want to miss a single incriminating statement. You son of a bitch. What the hell do you think you're doing? I started to respond, but she cut me off. You just couldn't let it go, could you? What is it, Mark? Is your fragile little male ego hurt? You humiliated me in front of my co-workers and now you're divorcing me? Fine, I'll go through with it but you'll pay for this. You know you can't prove the adultery you put in the divorce papers, and without that, I'm going to take everything you have. I hope you're happy. You could have just let it go. Were you really that upset that I had amazing sex with a celebrity? You could have just let me have a good time, but no. Well, screw you. Amy paced around while I sat silently. She returned to the living room with fire in her eyes. When are you moving out? I'm not moving out. I'm staying right here. Oh no, you're not. If you want a divorce, you'll have to leave. She stared at me for a few moments, expecting me to stand up, but I just sat there smiling. Fine. When this is all over, you'll regret not just keeping your mouth shut and letting us move on. The next month was incredibly tense. Amy and I didn't speak to each other. The kids slowly began distancing themselves from Amy. Julie even started wondering aloud whether her mother had really cheated. Amy told anyone who would listen that I had made the whole thing up. Her lawyer filed a response to our petition, requesting sanctions for false claims. She even tried to get the court to force me out of the house. That motion was denied. The court expedited our hearing, and both sides were given limited time for testimony and cross-examination of witnesses. My lawyer questioned both Amy and her friend Jenny. They both denied that Amy had left with the soap opera star and even denied meeting him or going to the club. While preparing me for my testimony, 
My lawyer emphasized the importance of telling the truth, but not volunteering any additional information. She hoped that their lawyer wouldn't ask about the evidence we had gathered regarding Amy's affair, likely assuming we didn't have any. As Mrs. Sampson had predicted, their lawyer drilled into me that I had not personally witnessed any infidelity on my wife's part, but didn't ask whether I had any evidence of her cheating. It seemed to me that their lawyer didn't know Amy had actually done what I was accusing her of. At the actual court hearing, I'm sure Amy thought everything was going perfectly. I testified about Amy's infidelity, sharing my feelings about marital cheating and my objections to the hall pass concept. During cross-examination, I was questioned on the same topics. Yes, I admitted that I wasn't at her conference and didn't witness her doing anything with other men. Amy testified that she hadn't done anything and, like me, was against marital infidelity and would never agree to the concept of a hall pass. Amy's lawyer called Jenny to the stand to testify that the meeting with the soap star never happened. I glanced at her husband, Jack, who was in the courtroom while she testified. He lowered his head to avoid my gaze. Jenny began to squirm when my lawyer asked her about Jack's phone call and her statement that Amy had left with the soap star. Clearly nervous now, she stuck to her story, insisting that it didn't happen. When Jenny sat down, both Amy and her lawyer looked smug. Amy's lawyer stood up and began arguing for sanctions against us for making false claims. The judge started reprimanding my lawyer for not proving the allegations we had made. With a smile on her face, Mrs. Sampson stood up. Your Honor, I apologize, but we have irrefutable evidence. Amy's lawyer snapped back, objection. We were not notified about any evidence. We are not required to disclose evidence. If their witnesses had told the truth, there would be no need for rebuttals. The judge smiled and motioned for Mrs. Sampson to proceed. Doubt Mrs. Sampson called her investigator to the stand. Your Honor, before we continue... We acknowledge that Mrs. Butler did not have sex with Joshua Morrow. I couldn't believe what I was hearing, but Mrs. Sampson shot me a look that told me to stay quiet and wait. The investigator testified that Joshua Morrow had been in Europe during that week. Amy's lawyer jumped up. With this admission that my client did not commit adultery, we demand that this farce be ended and the court impose sanctions on Mr. Butler. Mrs. Sampson, with a wide smile on her face, responded, No. We are not saying she didn't commit adultery. We're simply saying it wasn't with Joshua Morrow. Jenny was called back to the stand. My lawyer asked her again if she had been with Amy at the conference and if they had met someone they believed to be Joshua Morrow. She denied it again. Jenny was then asked if she had called her husband and told him that Amy had left with a man who was not her husband. Even after being reminded that she was under oath, Jenny denied making the call. I turned to look at her husband, who mouthed silently. I'm so sorry. My lawyer played the recording of Jenny's phone call. Amy's lawyer jumped up, objecting to the recording. Mrs. Sampson responded, Your Honor, my client was a guest in the witness's home and was permitted to overhear the call. The judge told Amy's lawyer to sit down and ask Jenny if the voice on the recording was hers. She had no choice but to admit that it was. I started to feel vindicated as the evidence began to confirm that I had been telling the truth Amy was called to the stand. She continued to deny that, upon returning from her trip, she had confessed to having sex with another man. She gasped loudly when the video of her describing her sexual encounter with Joshua Morrow was presented. Amy was in tears when the selfies and the signed promotional photo were introduced as evidence. As Amy left the witness stand, the judge turned to Mrs. Sampson. Counselor, I'm confused. You stated that Mrs. Butler didn't have sex with Joshua Morrow, yet you've just presented evidence proving that she did. Mrs. Sampson called her investigator to the stand. Your Honor, we have proven that Mrs. Butler committed adultery, just not with the person she thought. The investigator presented surveillance photos from the club. Several photos showed Amy with the man she had left the club with. Pointing to the photos, the investigator explained. This is not Joshua Morrow. This man is known for targeting married women. He is a notorious con artist who has been diagnosed with multiple sexually transmitted diseases. At that moment, I only needed to glance at Amy. The look of shock on her face was priceless. After a short recess, the judge returned to the bench and gave a long speech about honesty and fidelity. The judge ruled that Amy had committed adultery as outlined in our prenuptial agreement. He ruled in my favor, upholding the terms of the agreement. 
The judge then lectured Amy, stating that even without the prenuptial agreement, he would have awarded me custody of the children. For the record, he deemed Amy an unfit mother due to her persistent attempts to deceive the court. With tears in her eyes, Amy turned away from her lawyer's table to leave. Mrs. Butler, stay where you are. We're not finished yet. The judge called Jenny to the stand to join Amy. You both raised your right hand and swore to tell the truth in this courtroom. That oath is sacred in this building. He looked directly at Jenny. I don't care if you had some misguided belief that you were helping your friend. A lie is still a lie in this courtroom. If this were a criminal case, you'd both be in jail right now. I find that both of you gave false testimony, and I'm holding you both in contempt of court. The judge fined them both the maximum penalty of $5,000 each. Amy's bad day got even worse as she walked out of the courthouse to find a local news crew pointing a camera in her face. Later, I learned that my lawyer had tipped them off. Mrs. Butler, do you have any comment about abandoning your family for a one-night stand with a fake TV star? The reporter's question was the straw that broke Amy's back. Amy let out a blood-curdling scream and then lunged at the reporter. It was a blur of arms and legs as Amy struck the reporter. She pinned her to the ground and yanked her by the hair, forcing a sheriff's deputy to use a taser to subdue her. The cameraman captured the entire episode on video. That evening, Amy was on every national news broadcast. Unfortunately for her, she didn't get to see her moment of fame. She was locked up in the county jail, where she spent the next six months. No, I didn't have a beautiful blonde lining up to take Amy's place. I was far too busy raising two kids as a single parent. And no, I didn't reconcile with Amy when she was released from jail, though she tried. My mother felt sorry for her and asked me to give her another chance, but I didn't and Amy lost her career and became the subject of ridicule throughout the town. Three months after Amy called and texted me, I agreed to meet her at her mother's house. I sat silently, listening as Amy told me how much she loved and missed me. She said she missed being part of our family. As a result of her arrest and conviction for assault, she was only allowed supervised visitation with the children. Amy said she was deeply sorry for lying about her affair, as she called it, and was so embarrassed to have been deceived by a con artist. She finished by begging me to take her back, promising to be the best wife in the world. I stood up and took a deep breath. Amy, that was a passionate speech. I believe you mean every word of it. You apologize for lying. You said you missed our family, and you said you loved me. I believe you. I really do, but what you didn't say speaks volumes. You never said you were sorry, nor did you show any remorse, for breaking our wedding vows. I think you regretted that it turned out you didn't have sex with the guy of your dreams. I don't believe you regret deceiving me, or even that it was an act of infidelity. The answer to your question is no, and hell no. I will not take you back now or ever. I want you to stop contacting me, period. If you don't, I will extend the restraining order that was issued when you were arrested. Amy stood up, crying. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I did that guy. And yes, I enjoyed it. I'm sorry that I enjoyed it. Is that what you wanted to hear? Amy, we're done. Go live your life. It won't be with me. I turned and walked up the door as Amy screamed at me her mother struggling to hold her back. Thank you for listening until the end. See you in the next episode of Cheating Secrets. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. Goodbye.